from Galwan and Ladakh to Yangtze and Arunachal Pradesh. In the last two to three years, we've seen the Indian and the Chinese side clash repeatedly over their interpretation of the boundary. The boundary issue is at the center of the Indo-Chinese relationship at the moment. And to bolster our security at the line of actual control, the Indian government, the Union Cabinet, has now taken crucial decisions to bolster the overall security infrastructure all along the line of actual control. What are these steps that have been announced? The Cabinet Committee on Security met and they have now sanctioned a long pending demand of ITBP to raise new battalions. Seven new battalions, one sector headquarter has been sanctioned at about 1800 crore, cost of 1800 crore. Uh, this this uh, amount will be used uh, to come up with new facility, both residential and official. There is also additional uh, set aside of, of 900 crores uh, to pay recurring expenses like salary, ration, etc. Now, why is this so important? Why did ITBP feel the need to raise these new battalions? For the last three or four years now, ITBP had been demanding specifically for Arunachal Pradesh uh, that they should have border outposts, more uh, border outposts, about 47 of them uh, were sanctioned. What officials tell me is that from Tawang, if you start moving towards uh, Dibang, there are a number of valleys in this area which are uninhabited. So when the patrolling parties would go patrol the LSE, there would not even be a structure above their head where they could halt for the night. So staging stations, basically halting stations for overnight halt. Also BOPs, border outposts, were the need of the hour. Often temperatures in this area are sub-zero and because there was nobody living in that area, we open ourselves uh, to Chinese side coming and intruding into our territory. Now, with this fresh manpower being coming in, uh, being brought in, and we are told every year from now up until uh, the next three years, we will see recruitment of more personnel, recruitment of more officials. Uh, these BOPs are already under construction. They were sanctioned in 2020, but we needed manpower. So now this manpower, at least 15 ITBP personnel uh, per BOP, could be seen in the in the next uh, you know few few months maybe by the end of the year uh, the recruitment process at least the first round of the recruitment process will start so that's the major focus as far as Arunachal Pradesh is concerned some uh, of the benefit could also pass on to Himachal Pradesh but majorly Arunachal if you recall Yangtze in Arunachal near Tawang is where uh, the latest round of clash really happened. The second important decision that has been taken, if you go to Ladakh, again, Galwan and Ladakh was a major flashpoint uh, that really triggered off and exposed how serious China was uh, to, to do what they call salami slicing, take away India's territory bit by bit. So in Ladakh now, um, as far as the main route is uh, concerned, in Ladakh, usually it is uh, mostly snowbound and there is a main uh, route in Ladakh which takes you from Nimu to Padam uh, to the Dharcha route. Now, in this route, a tunnel 4.1 kilometer long all-weather tunnel is uh, being sanctioned. This would mean that even in peak winter, if required, military uh, you know, uh, movement could happen, if infrastructure has to be moved, if military vehicles have to be moved with men or machine, this all-weather tunnel 4.1 kilometer long could come in handy. So connectivity issues as far as Ladakh is concerned would improve, allowing us greater maneuverability to move in. Already, BRO is constructing a lot of roads uh, towards uh, the line of actual control in Ladakh. We have seen clashes happen in Peng Pangong as well. There have been reports that a number of uh, areas in Ladakh which were earlier patrolled by India are now, uh, you know, they're, they're, they're restricted there. And that, that kind of situation has arisen uh, because of what we saw post Galvan. So now with this infrastructure push, India is also pushing back. Uh, just to take you back once again to Arunachal, you have uh, noted how from Arunachal Pradesh on their side of, of uh, the border, China has started settling in uh, villagers to make it uh, you know, dominated villages, habited uh, villages, also in Doklam, this has been reported. So that's where the third important decision from the Indian government comes in. That decision is the Vibrant Village Project. What is the Vibrant Village Project? It's a project at the cost of 4,800 crore, meant to encourage villagers who are originally from areas which are on the border, which are, which are on the LSE. Now, because they are, they are either snowbound and there are hardly any opportunities there, uh, there are no jobs there, there are uh, no avenues uh, to sustain 
explain yourself. Plus, China clashes with them, often denying uh, pasturing rights also to these villagers. There have been reports in Ladakh uh, where uh, the, 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 the villagers there have tried to take their sheep or goat um, to these grazing land and the PLA has stopped them from going further, claiming that the land is there, taking away their grazing land, taking away their pasture land. So the border villagers have repeatedly faced difficulty, beaten Ladakh, beaten Uttarakhand, beaten Arunachal Pradesh. So this vibrant village program is a project that the Indian government is coming up with to encourage villagers to continue to remain in those villages because like Prime Minister has repeatedly stated, they could be our first responder. If there is any kind of aggression, these villagers on border villages could be our first responder, uh, could be the eyes and ears. Like in Kargil, if you recall, it was the, the shepherd who first alerted that there was an incursion. So what is the Vibrant Village program? This is a program where one village, one product will be encouraged with help of NGOs, with help of other groups. They will be encouraged to come up with that one product, marketing of which will be aided by the government, which will give them some source of income. There will be help for infrastructural development as well. And in the process of infrastructural development, tourism related infrastructure could also be brought in in these villages, encouraging more and more tourists to travel to these border villages. The calculation is that if tourists travel to these border villages, if there is more back and to and fro, uh, if there are more movement in these areas, which so far, uh, like, like you know, uh, you know, long back when the 1962 war happened, it says not a blade of grass grows here. So that is the narrative uh, that the government is trying to change, that not just a blade of grass, but a lot grows on our border villages. So these three important decisions have been taken. Uh, a tunnel in, in Ladakh, a vibrant village program, and raising of new forces for ITBP, and the government is definitely giving a push for our security along the line of actual control.